Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I'm I'm all confused today. I'm sitting here thinking that one o'clock the game start, and it's actually three o'clock. I keep forgetting that uh, the playoff schedule is a little bit different. I guess in some regards, my mind has just been used to one o'clock kickoffs on Sundays. You know uh, that unfortunately it's time. To to really start getting ready for the off season, um, you know, there's. I, I saw Tommy Davis tweeted out this morning uh, a post. You know, one of you, you and he probably follows. I guess you follow the channel. I don't know, um, but he tweeted out that so many of the you know Cowboys YouTubers and people and things are basically blaming everything with Dak Prescott. And that's the easy thing to do. It's always easier to go ahead and just say, let's find something to blame and blame him and, you know, appease the masses. You know, that's the bandwagon right now. Everybody is, you know, Dak sucks, get rid of him, he's a bum and everything else, he sucks and yada, yada, yada. Instead of actually digging down underneath and seeing all of the deficits that the Cowboys have, and they have a lot of them. We have a lot of issues, and if you really and truly look and watch these other games and see what these other teams are doing with the amount of time quarterbacks are having in the pocket and supplementing the passing game, of course, with running games and things like that, it's a little bit different. And so I, I tweeted back at that, and I've been basically, I was like, yo, I'm taking bullets. I'm taking bullets here trying to explain what I see as the problems. And the, here's the great thing about YouTube and things like that. There's not like a state-sponsored news and sports that you have to watch. That it's only one view. There's one channel, you know, like in some of the communist countries. You're free to watch any one that you want, and you don't have to agree with any of them. And whether you like me or not, I, I'm glad if you do, um, there's plenty out there that I'll have an opinion that you might like. And that's where I say, explore the different options and don't waste your time with ones you don't like. So Cam Newton, you know, one of the many, you know, professional athletes and things, and you're seeing more and more professional athletes that are getting into podcasting and YouTube and things. It's making it a crowded space. But they speak from a different point of view than what you get from guys who haven't been there. Now, Cam Newton is, you know, definitely vocal. I, I had the fortune of, in 2012, meeting and driving Cam Newton around uh, the Washington, D.C. area when he was doing a youth symposium and meeting him and talking to him on a different level than what you see. And there's a lot more to Cam Newton than just the crazy clothes and things like that that he wears. He does speak a lot of truth. And sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. Now, I want you to deal with the message more so than the messenger here because Dak had a better career than you. Jason McIntyre comes out and says, you know, Cam Newton is just jealous because Dak Prescott has had a better career than Cam Newton. And they go through and they use numbers to say, see, look what I'm talking about, the numbers why. But see, this is where you have to understand, and if you go to college and take statistics, which I hated that class, but between mean, mo between mean, median, mode, and modulation, you can take numbers and you can manipulate them to fit a narrative if you want to. If you have an ultimate goal to say, here's the evidence by the numbers, and trust me, it is done more times than not. They'll come up with new matrix like interceptable plays. Well, if we talk about interceptable plays, there were quite a few last night that Brock Purdy had that were dropped. They just were. You can always find a narrative, excuse me, a number to fit your narrative. And Cam Newton kind of bitch slaps this one with Jason McIntyre's old case of Dak Prescott's got a better career than you do. What I will say is, because here's the thing, you can say, if you pick and say Dak Prescott's passing career is better than Cam Newton's, that's a fact. But you have to look at it in totality because of also the dynamics that Cam Newton had of being able to run. 
let's listen to Cam Newton on here. I think this is a really good take here. For three years. So people know who I am, mm -hmm. right? Let's speak on what I spoke about. The, the gist of his conversation was that Dak had a better career than Cam. Subjective and highly opinionated. And my quarrel is not with Dak. My quarrel is with Jason McIntyre and other analysts that speak in ways to make them feel that they're more suitable to talk about something than mm -hmm. a person who actually did it. The clip goes on to say, Don't alarm anyone, I'm gonna say it in a whisper, but Cam Newton, you had a worse career than Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has had a better NFL career than Cam Newton. And we got a great staff here at the Herd. They were able to pull up some stats. Let's just so take a glance. So press pause right there. What this stat doesn't say, I was a dual threat quarterback. This is a very subjective statistic. Add in pass attempts. Add in rushing yards. Rushing touchdowns. Add in rushing touchdowns. Because who's number one as a quarterback? Nah, nah, nah. See, th see, this is where they try to manipulate the narrative. And instead of speaking about what I said as a analysis or from the analytical approach, they try to poke at the person. So now, Jason, if I were to do my research on you personally, whether oh. failed situations, got fired from a job, flunked out of college, never made a basketball. If I really were to do that, then I will be evil. Mm -hmm. You're picking on him. I'm picking on him. You're the bully. I'm the bully. Or they love to this one. They love this one. I'm bitter. Mm -hmm. So as you make your point, cool, but add in all elements of football. If you're trying to uh, uh, give an analytical approach and comparing the way Lamar Jackson plays the game and Patrick Mahomes played a game, of course Patrick Mahomes is going to have more passing yards because they passed the ball more. But if you were to flip it and say, who has more rushing yards? Oh, but that quarterback can't run. You know, like, come on, now. don't do that. Who's responsible for more scores? Come on. Because <laughs> whether you throw it there or run it there, how many points you still going to get? Six. Hello. And it's about scoring. Scoring. <laughs> That's the name of the game. Get to the final rectangle on the field. And how many, well, just even with those, how many years did that get to the Super Bowl? Ah, we're not going to talk about, this is not it's about, not about Dak. Dak. It's about the Let's analysts. Let's not make this about Dak. My issue is with the people who feel that they can speak about go. this. Mm -hmm. Then it's not, it's not a f suitable tagline. And I was tagged on Twitter or X or Instagram and things like that. People love to pull up this statistic, but Anybody who knows how I played the game, it was a dual threat. Mm -hmm. Dual meaning yeah. I can attack you throwing the ball and running the ball. Put up those statistics and I, let's, let's still compare that. Than Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has had a better NFL career than Cam Newton. Press we got a great pause. Staff here. <laughs> like right there. You got to stop that, bro. Like stop that. Let's not get personal. My whole thing is this. Newton's law. It's Newton. all about keeping that same energy. And the main reason why I started this platform was to be able to hold people accountable. Other clips there you go. from Paul Feinbaum as well and his statement about Michigan and Coach Harbaugh and what he was not able to do or what he's willing to bet. Ah, Stephen A. Smith is the same situation. When you go and you make a bold statement to say the Houston Texans have zero chance to beat the Cleveland Browns. Why can we not hold him accountable to that same thing? That's true. And I hey, look, this ain't no attack at Stephen A. No. I fuck with Stephen A. But Stephen A, come on, bro. Making these there bold, outlandish statements. I would cut Jameis Winston. I don't know what it's like to be in that locker room. The unity, the harmony, going through the emotions of a whole season. That's why Jameis did what he did. It's bigger than just sports. It's, man, you're building lifelong relationships with these 
men mm -hmm. and sometimes women. Yeah. So we have everybody speaking on a term that it's still, at the end of the day, subjective. What's your merit? What are you getting at? Yeah, what qualifies these people to what speak on What qualifies these people to speak on there this? There you go. So it's easy. And you're probably watching this saying like, oh, man, Cam won his get back. No, I don't want my get back. I want mm -hmm. everybody to get back who can't talk about this sport. Just because, oh, I've covered sports for so many different years. Skip Motherfucker, Bayless. you wasn't in that buff, and you wasn't in the trenches preparing. And you can have all what you want to say about the New York Knicks. You can say what all you want to say about the Carolina Panthers. You can say all what you say about Dallas Cowboys. But until you had to prepare like Tua Tonga Valoa, until you had to prepare like LeBron James, until you had to prepare like Patrick Mahomes and play in front of 60, 70, 80, 90,000, then or how the hell can you really talk about him in that, in that type of degree and we do have the clip and it wasn't just Stephen A it was on the Pat McAfee show the person spoke to CJ Stroud and, and kind of talked about uh, their chances of uh, them winning we'll, 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 we'll CJ Titus French we'll, we'll, we'll leave it right there but don't deal with the messenger deal with the message the thing is is they come through without having any knowledge and experience. You know, Skip Bayless will famously tell you, I've covered football for 20. Who cares? Who cares? If you have not been in that huddle down by six with you need a game winning drive, you're tired, you, your body is sore. You got the weight of the world. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. And Cam Newton, he hits the nail on the head. And, you know, I'm not going to be one here saying that Dak Prescott's career is better than Cam Newton. Cam Newton had a 15-1 and one season. They went to the Super Bowl. They just got into a buzzsaw against um, Denver. Cam Newton never really had support around him in great offense. He had Stephen Smith. Uh, uh, Stephen Smith. Steve Smith, as a wide receiver, was his best wide receiver, but he never had great coaching. We see what Ron Rivera is as a head coach. Um, so the narrative, of course, it's real easy for these guys that have never been there and done that to go ahead and act like they know and give you a whole lot of bullshit. And it's almost funny because I remember McIntyre used to just talk about how bad Dak Prescott was. You know, I've, he's never been an MVP candidate. He's nobody. Carson Wentz. I just like, are you kidding me? That the message that you're getting from these guys is salationism to set a narrative to get you to watch and should be used for entertainment purposes only. If you're looking at this to be the facts, uh, you're looking at the wrong place. All right, good people. I will see y'all at 3 o'clock. Hope you're having a great Sunday. Um, yeah. Peace.